European Union says it is concerned about what happened in Zimbabwe this week. The EU ambassador to Zimbabwe, Timo Olkonen, was responding to accusations that police used excessive force to disperse a crowd of MDC supporters who were gathering outside the MDC offices in Harare. Now the ambassador held talks with authorities in Zimbabwe. We heard indeed uh, an explanation from the from the Zimbabwean side, you know, about how events events transpired. Uh, we took note of that. Um, we were we are quite concerned about what happened yesterday in, the, in terms of uh, excessive excessive use of uh, force uh, by the police. Uh, but indeed, we had a discussion about this issue. Do you think that there's been enough progress made in terms of reforms, reform agenda? Well, we were very much encouraging uh, further uh, momentum on the uh, reform agenda. Uh, we do think from the EU side that uh, progress has been uh, slower than we would have expected and I think it has been also slower than the government has uh, you know, originally pronounced about how quickly the government would move forward with various reforms. Um, but we had a good, uh, good quite detailed uh, discussion about that and uh, clear indications that you know, further steps on the reform agenda would be, would be taken. To talk about the latest developments in Zimbabwe, I'm joined in studio by Sibaneng Dube from the Zimbabwe Exiles Forum and also joining us via Skype from London is Deo Mavinga, the Southern Africa Director at Human Rights Watch. A very good evening to you two gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, welcome to the Globe. Good evening. Thanks. Mr. Dube, I'm going to start with you. We've seen what happened in Zimbabwe in the mm. past few days. So what's your analysis of uh, what unfolded in that country? No, it is very unfortunate that the ED a government that actually started off with all uh, public goodwill actually decided to actually tramp on people's rights. Uh, people are starving. People are actually uh, having difficulties uh, in terms of accessing basic amenities. And the people actually congregated to actually listen to the president of MDC Alliance, Nelson Jamisa, uh, who was actually going to address giving people of, of what the situation should be in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, uh, the ZANPF government doesn't seem to see any sanity in actual giving relief to people. There's corruption, there's shortages of everything, there's a rampant abuse of human rights, and the people are saying, can't we stop this and actually uh, map a way forward to have the nation go back into the rails? Mm -hmm. But the response is tear gas, uh, bullets and uh, also violence. That is very unfortunate. <laughs> Emerson Mnangagwa missed a very good opportunity to actually redeem Zimbabwe from where Robert Mugabe actually plunged it into. And uh, the whole nation and the international community had actually given him an opportunity to do so. But he actually decided to continue actually maintaining uh, the kind of uh, heavy handedness which Mugabe actually have been actually subjecting Zimbabweans to. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dewa Mavingad, let me bring you into this conversation. We've seen earlier on uh, armed forces uh, uh, firing tear gas on peaceful marchers or peaceful members of the MDC, but then the police are actually denying that that was the case, saying that, they, that, that there was an agreement between members of the MDC and as well as the police forces that that particular meeting should be held in an area outside or on the outskirts of Harare, but that wasn't the case. So what's your analysis? Well, what we need to uh, accept is that the leadership of the police in Zimbabwe is highly politicized and partisan. And uh, just the bidding of Zanu PM and uh, President Nagawa's group. So they are dishonest. The reality is that uh, under this Nagawa government, human rights abuses by state security forces, particularly the police, have been rampant. There has been easy resort to police brutality, excessive force on protesters, even when there is no provocation. Mm. And the leadership of Zimbabwe has failed to hold accountable those that have been committing abuses. We know that there was a Motlante led commission of inquiry that established that. Uh, Life bullets had been used on protesters. Six people had been killed, and there was need to hold accountable 
those security officers responsible, but this has not happened. Uh, like what it says, say, Nangagwa's government has squandered all goodwill. There is a massive unfold monetary crisis in Africa, which includes 7.5 million people who need food aid this year, and 2.5 million of those people are in urban areas. And the UNICEF official aid that is correct, over 4 million uh, Zimbabweans resort to open dedication. Over 4.5 million uh, residents in Harare do not have access to clean water. So it's an unfolding, massive humanitarian crisis, which then makes the government fear that the citizens will uprise and the hand the heavy-handed that we are witnessing, the human rights abuse that we are witnessing, and the unfold political and economic crisis, which has largely been ignored by the Southern African community side. You mentioned heavy-handedness. Uh, I mean, uh, that's uh, uh, perhaps the sentiment that's been echoed by so many political uh, analysts and actors who are of the view that, uh, you know, the repression in Zimbabwe is far worse than uh, during the Mugabe era. Are you also of the same view? Absolutely. And we have seen that uh, this regime is more vicious. If you look at the event of that uh, uh, protest outside the MPC offices, where their president, Jason Chamisa, was due to address. There was no violence. The group was peaceful. But we saw indiscriminate use of force, where the police randomly beat up. Everyone was in the vicinity and with no accountability. Women sustained broken limbs, broken legs, and the violence is just unimaginable. It's needless. There was no point and no reason whatsoever. So, in this short period of time of, say, two years, Adam Nangam, Zimbabwe has witnessed gratuitous violence of, on a massive scale with total impunity. Now, Mr. Dube, we've seen uh, President Nagagwa launching uh, four dialogue initiatives. I'm going to just list uh, some of them, political actors. That's one of them, the Presidential Advisory Council, the Matebeleland Collective, and the Tripartite National Forum. Don't you think, then, that the, this is a means of uh, getting all Zimbabweans to come to the table uh, to, you know, to collectively come up with solutions for the ills that are currently facing the country? No, that's, that, that those are not genuine efforts to actually address the real situation in Zimbabwe. The real actors in the political scenario in Zimbabwe is MDC Alliance and ZANU-PF. All those initiatives are designed to woodwink uh, the international community from where the real players are. Uh, if you actually go, if you were to go by the election results. But when he took up office, he extended an olive branch to the MDC and uh, he invited them for uh, round talk, to, uh, you know, ro yeah, round table talks with regards to uh, uh, rebuilding the country. But that never happened. No, look, uh, what matters is not just extending an olive branch, but what matters are the conditions attached to that olive branch. The conditions attached are you must actually recognize me as the winner. And MDCA is saying we don't actually recognize you as the winner because co circumstances and the way the results were announced doesn't seem to suggest that you are the winner. Because if you are to ask anybody the results of the elections, no one can give an answer. By what margin did Mnangagwa actually win? How many votes did he pull? Even the ZEC that actually conducted the elections could not give us a clear-cut uh, figure of how much polls did Mnangagwa actually polled. So the issue is, in as much as we don't want to go political, because I'm not speaking on behalf of the MDC, but the question is, how many votes did Mnangagwa poll? Because four figures were actually pulled out. And the question is, which one is the final one? So this explains why we are saying uh, the political, the, the legitimacy of Mnangagwa is actually under spotlight and we cannot pretend that uh, that issue has actually been, has been explained and everybody is actually, uh, and everybody is actually in agreement with that. And even recently the South African uh, government 
through uh, Naledu Pandi, Dr. Naledu Pandi actually indicated that in as much as we can actually talk about uh, sanctions, but the issue is actually political, is a political problem about legitimacy. To what extent is the current government legitimate? If the current government was legitimate and in love and in tune with the electorate, we would not have seen such kind of violence against the very people who the government claimed to have voted them. All right, Mr. Deo Mavinga, um, we've seen, uh, you know, doctors being fired and mass as a result of that doctor strike, which dragged on for weeks and weeks. I mean, the fact that uh, some of these doctors were demanding, uh, you know, increments or increases or, or salary increases at that, which the government didn't have, are we likely to see a total collapse of the entire health system in that country? Uh, Simpiwe, the health system in Zimbabwe has collapsed. Already. It has already collapsed. The demands by the doctors in Zimbabwe are reasonable. They are modest. But the government has not given priority to this pressing need. Just uh, yesterday, Vice President Constantino Chwenga returned from many months of medical care in China. The leaders in Zimbabwe, when they fall sick, they fly to South Africa, they fly to Singapore, to Dubai, to China. So they do not care about the state of the health service. Simply a few days back, there was a brief story of how women are resorting to unsafe backyard deliveries, pregnant women, where there is no sanitation, where there are risks of complications, and yet even the first lady of Zimbabwe, Oxili Nangagwa, was celebrating those backyard uh, deliveries by untrained midwives. This is the state of affairs as far as the health sector is uh, in, in, uh, in Zimbabwe. The Minister of Health in Zimbabwe should simply step aside because the system has collapsed completely. I mean, I'm also reading into the arrival of uh, the Vice President, uh, General Chiwenga, who returned from overseas you know, after being hospitalized for weeks now. I mean, that speaks to the fact that the health system in Zimbabwe has totally collapsed. The fact that uh, he sought medical assistance from foreign countries. Yes, and uh, this was at government expense, and uh, millions as spent on these foreign medical trips and on paying uh, hospital bills, when in fact this money should be put towards resuscitating Zimbabwe's health system, there can be no development if Zimbabwe does not have a solid, robust health sector. Um, but we continue to see that the leaders prepare to fly out on health tourism and live a dilapidated and corrupt system. Hospitals have shut down. More than 400 medical doctors have been fired for expressing legitimate demands that they have no equipment in hospitals, not even love, not even pay in at the hospital. So hospitals have been shut down. Mr. Duba, what do you think needs to be done then? I mean, uh, seeing that the, the country is struggling to keep the lights on, economically speaking, and uh, investors, you know, they are not coming into in, to the country to resuscitate the economy. What then needs to be done? You see, uh, what is happening in Zimbabwe is actually a crisis, which needs uh, external intervention to assist. We can actually talk about Zimbabweans being left alone to actually come up with a solution. But that, gonna ha that, that is not going to happen. Because there is no political will on the part of the ruling elite to get things done. So what I think has to be done is, honestly, we have no option except South Africa has to take a lead as the brother in the region, like what they did before in 2008. At the moment, as long as Zimbabweans are actually left on their own... But you say South Africa needs to take a lead in what form? Uh, like what happened in 2008, uh, the former president Tabombek actually came up with an initiative which actually saw MDC and the ZANPF coming to the table and come up with a GNU, which temporarily improved the lives of the people, even though a lot of other objectives were not met, but at least there was a stop to madness. At the moment in Zimbabwe, there is maddening starvation. There is actually serious suffering of people. And as, as what my colleague uh, Mavinga has just said, we've got a hospi hospitals which have just been turned into death traps. There's no medication, not even painkillers. And there are no doctors. 
and the people had their legs broken by police officers. And they were talking about people who actually could not even have even um, painkillers to actually soften their pain. So in Zimbabwe, you know, there's I've a crisis. I've my question in the context of, uh, you know, the economics of the country. How does the country resuscitate the economy, looking at, that, at the fact that the reserves are almost nil? Uh, Where can the country get that particular windfall to resuscitate the economy? The economy cannot be divorced from politics. You have to actually sort up your political house before you actually talk about the economy. At the moment, there is no sane investor who can actually invest in Zimbabwe with this kind of madness that is happening. In Zimbabwe, you cannot even uh, uh, guarantee property rights. You cannot even guarantee life. You know what I mean? So tell me of any fool who would actually inject money in Zimbabwe at the moment when we've got uh, the ruling elite that are actually running riot on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, accounts of investors. Let me give an example. Recently, this government has actually underreported a, 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 a money which was actually pumped by China, an old friend weather, an old friend weather friend, who actually pumped in 136 million into the economy, but they only reported. 3 million in their budget. So the issue is we have got systematic actually looting by crooks who are actually in government. And also, not only that only, a few weeks ago they also uh, uh, they also raided an account which was actually put aside by the Chinese to actually do capital projects including expanding Robert Mugabe International Airport. Mm -hmm. And they actually raided and stole 10 million. And they're not running away from the actual say, okay, yeah, that's we did it, but we're sorry. Mm -hmm. And you are talking about a government where a minister cannot account for three planes. We've got three planes, nobody can actually tell the nation right. where those planes went, including six long wings of a plane. All right. Unfortunately, we don't have much time. Uh, but uh, before I let you go, Mr. Mavinga, we've seen uh, another uproar in Zimbabwe with regards to the renaming of streets, uh, the major streets under President Emerson Nagagwa. What do you think is the genesis of this, uh, of this particular uproar? Is it because it's too soon or is it because of the cost that, uh, you know, uh, the, the cost of updating the records? Well, the, the reason is that it's irrelevant. The government of Nagagwa is majoring in minor issues. There is a collapsed health sector, and we have a whole cabinet and government sit to talk about renaming of streets. At what cost? This government has no priorities. They are talking now, uh, the finance minister, of uh, setting, uh, sending a space um, shuttle into space when there is no medication, when 7.5 million people have no food, and when Four million people are resorting to open defecation in Zimbabwe. So it is the frustration that this government is out of touch. It does not know what is happening to the ordinary person. It must address bread and butter and not talk about street names uh, right. to glorify themselves. All right. Uh Mr. Dewo Mavinga and uh, Spanning Idube from the Zimbabwe Exiles Forum and uh, Mavinga from the Southern Africa Director at Human Rights Watch. Thanks to you two gentlemen for joining us. Much appreciated. All right, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. This is The Globe.